Greetings everyone. This video, I'm going to show you all how I make our yoni bars. I'm going to also share some soap making technique and some design techniques as well. On this table, laid out, I already have some stuff prepped already. Um, in the soap, we have, we're using um, three fresh ingredients. We're using lemons, aloe, and apple cider vinegar. So the first thing you're going to see me do here is prepare that. Then I also have right here our lye water. This is what's going to turn our this is what's going to turn our oils to soap. I have some of our oils here already, pre-melted palm oil and coconut oil. These need to be melted completely so the fatty acids um, could fully disperse so we can make our soap properly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, um, get the gel out of our aloe. This is actually an aloe from our plant outside of our house, so y'all are in for a treat. Um, one tip I like to share is how to cut these aloes without like still, like without pricking your fingers with the, with the stick. It is to just slice it off, slice the sides off first. Instead of just like slicing off one or like what I used to do when I first started um, working with aloe was like stick the knife in the middle and then work down and not have a side of it pricking me. Um, I learned this way of taking it off. <laughs> All right, and then slid it right down the middle. And this is full with a whole bunch of juice. All right. So I'm just going to take out all of the gel out of the aloe before I weigh it um, so I can get it down to a liquid. I'm going to stick blend it down. I found that using my soap stick blender is easier than using like a blender, my own like house blender or a Nutribullet. Um, it's one less supplies, one less thing on the table. Um, so yeah, that's another helpful tip. Okay, and I'm using a spoon to just go like this and scrape out. Like I want this aloe to be dry. I want this sheet to be completely dry, so I want all that gel in there. Now the reason why I decided to add aloe vera into the yoni bars specifically using the cold process way is because adding it to melt and pour is not the best way. It's actually not a really bright idea to put fresh aloe or any fresh ingredients into melt and pour because melt and pour soap is already made soap and what you're adding in is kind of like is something that's not cooked. Put it like that. Like it's not, it's not preserve like the cooking process of making um doing the cold process way is going to preserve this aloe into our soap if we put it into our melting pour you have to use that soap like within the same day or a couple of days because aloe does expire just like lemons but apple cider vinegar is a preservative so yeah you see how slippery this aloe is that's how good it is for your yummy. <laughs> On top of that, it's also like antiviral. Um, it's really good. It's a bitter, so it's also it's also really good internally to take it. Not the soap, but the aloe by itself, <laughs> like the gel. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna do half of it because I am on live and I don't want the time to go too long. So I'm gonna juice this and see how much we have here. Thank you. 
Another tip when working, you see how this turns into a liquid? It's basically the water that's going to be used in our soap. Like a lot of fruits and vegetables contains water, right? They have, they make their own water. So not only do we get like, you know, like rainwater, or like spring water, you know, there's, there's water in here. Like this is wallow. Uh, <laughs> this is water. With like the benefits of the aloe in there. Um, with the properties, sorry, of the aloe in there. So I'm going to weigh out how much we have here. type that you get in the bottle we're making our own here okay scooping it out scooping it out okay we're making three loaves of soap today um so i have uh, three soap molds here um I'm gonna be using about like two ounces of fresh aloe in for this for this batch here. Cut, cut, slice down the middle, scoop out the gel, scoop out the gel. Now you gotta be very careful when you're working with aloe because like I said, it's a bitter and it also is very stinging. It stings the skin. Like if you were to do a straight aloe mask, after a while, it'll start, it's it's a tightener, so it'll tighten your pores, but it'll cause a sting. When we put it in the soap, you're not going to feel no sting, but the properties and benefits are there. joining us you are watching me make our yoni soap bars these are the new ones um, we are going to have like a batch that's going to be restocked very soon so be sure to join our subscription list via email or text um, so you could be the first to know when that restock happens and also for exclusive black friday deals um, zoviacollection.com is where you can find this okay so now i'm going to use a strainer to make sure I don't get any clumps in here. I want it to be fluid. And I'm going to weigh. Cold process soap making is an exact science. You can't just guess how much you're going to put in. Dang, is this not enough? Ooh. Ooh. a little better. I put the biggest piece. <laughs> I'm using my spoon to move it around. Turn it this way so y'all can see. Mm 
to say. I thought I eyed this right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah, let's do that a lot. Okay. Normally, what I'll do with the rest of this aloe is to, like, bottle it. But while I have y'all attention, I'm not going to waste y'all time to do that. I'm going to continue so y'all can see how... I turn fresh ingredients, how you can also turn fresh ingredients into beautiful soaps. Okay, so 2.65, the aloe. Okay. Oh, okay. Dang, I'm going to need to bottle this because I'm going to need this. I'll be right back. That's not some of the lemon squirted inside of the um the light solution, but that's okay. I'm just gonna squeeze this out and I'm using a strainer because this all uh, this has the pulp and I don't want any of the pulp um to like if you use the pulp of this, it'll kinda like get suspended in your soap and not cure like properly like you won't have a smooth soap you might have something with like a lemon pulp bulk right and then the seed as well it's not gonna make for a very pretty soap so that's why i'm straining it and the seed got in there okay we're gonna do a double strain arm workout
So now our fresh ingredients are ready. Now we can get to the fun part. Okay. Um, what I just poured, because I didn't mention it, was the apple cider vinegar. I use Bragg's um, Organic. I use the one that have the mother. So what's important, the brand is not really important, is the fact that it's organic and it's made with the mother, um, which is basically the active ingredient that make apple cider vinegar so great and it helps with like yeast infections and a whole bunch of other things. Um, so let me clear this and I'll be right back. temperature here of this solution 134 okay once you keep it down and while that's happening I'm gonna continue to pour my oil so here okay now we're gonna do our avocado oil which is really nourishing to the skin it helps to soften the skin and it can withstand high temperatures that is part of the soap making process so a lot if not most of the properties of the avocado oil i know we talk about the ingredients and how like the properties and the benefits but because soap red raspberry oil which is red raspberry leaf red raspberry red raspberry fruit in general the oil all that is really good for women's health for womb health um, so that's that's one of the oils we're using this is one of the oils that I got from 3kg they are on Instagram one of my faves um, you can actually see their like supply chain. They're like always, so they get most of them. <laughs> okay, 4.5. Okay, hold on, yeah, hold on. I'm about to go into a little story. Because they're like one of my favorite suppliers, so I want to highlight them real quick. They offer fast shipping, um, and their stuff is coming, well, most of it's coming from all over the world, but most of it is coming from like, um benin um and like nigeria is coming from africa um they got some stuff that is coming from india but like they show you the process you can see the women like you see women with the baby cares they got the woman the baby on the back wrapped in cloth like whipping up the shea butter absolutely love it um so that's where we got our red raspberry oil from that oil is a very rare oil i don't like you, you don't find it often and if you do they they tax on it meaning they upcharge <laughs> but this company 3kg is very affordable i also got the baobab oil from there which is also a very nourishing oil food to eat to use so we're putting that in the soap Some olive oil, it's really gentle for the skin. And yoni. If I say skin, I'm talking about the yoni, it's interchangeable. Um, olive.
plaster, which I don't have here, so I have to go get it. And I'm using Haitian castor oil, one of my faves. Um, it's 5% of our recipe. This castor oil helps to add ladder, helps to make our soap really bubbly. Um, so yeah, we're doing 4.5 of that. Pour the rest oils in. This is all the oils. Normally I go a little faster. My brain is like, oh, you're on live. But here we go, pouring the oils in. Okay, so because we're gonna create like designs and swirls in this soap, um, we want our batter to be very smooth, liquidy. We don't want a thick batter because we want it to be able to move and give us our swirls. Um, so what I'm going to do is have our oils and then we're going to add in our light solution. Before I do that, I'm going to add in our sodium lactate, which is going to move this out the way. make our bars nice and solid so i'm going to add this straight to our live solution here mix it up move this out the way done check the temperature 125 89 so we're about 30 degrees within each other which is fine for soap mixing I'm gonna let that cool some more um, and just clear my space. That's another tip. Keep your space clear. <laughs> sure that you mix everything properly thoroughly before you use it and then it's made a little mess but that's okay that's okay all right so we want okay so what this is this one right here is our this is how i make this some of the soaps white um using titanium dioxide it is skin safe um, making sure it's fully dissolved in some grapeseed oil or fully dispersed, not dissolved. And then here is going to be our green layer. This is also in grapeseed oil. This is green mica and some blues. We are making the uh, the mint yoni bar. I'm gonna put 
put my gloves back on, my big thick gloves on. Okay. Okay. These gloves are not gonna do it because it's gonna leave skin exposed. Because of how, like, you see how deep this, this jar is? I wanna make sure my skin is completely covered because when these mix, they're not cured. They are not, you know, the pH has not been like settled. So it causes skin irritation on its own, right? So I have to cover and protect my skin while I make y'all soap to nourish your skin. And y'all can also make y'all soaps and nourish your people's skin. Okay, so. Let me do that this first. Okay, where we at? Where we at? First thing we're gonna do is put in. I already have this in here. All right. I'm gonna bring over my scent. This is an essential oil blend. I do not use any artificial fragrances, especially inside of the yoni bars, because going into like the most sensitive area. Well, not into. Don't put the soap into your vagina. <laughs> you know, you clean the outside. You know, there's tutorials on how to clean yourself. <laughs> Alright, so, okay, now we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do, some people might add the solution, the lice, the solution, and then this solution here, which is our fresh ingredients together. That can cause discoloration. That could also cause, like, your soap to, like, trace fast, trace fast, like, speed up. So, what I do, I add the solution first, and then I add... I add in this solution so I do it like one by one and I don't use a stick blender I use my hand to mix it my hand to mix it in and then I use a stick blender very lightly not much because again this is going to be a design soap something with swirls so we want our we want our batter to be very fluid okay let's get to it wasted enough time here <laughs> okay do I want to use this, the spatula, this thing, like, it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, here we go. I need something stable. You want to use a spatula that has, like, a good grip. That one kind of, like, slips. It's really good for, like, scooping out after. But right now, not so much. So now I'm going to slowly, slowly pour this in. When you slowly pour it in, you avoid the bubbles, which... We have a lot of bubbles. You can get bubbles in your soap, so we're just gonna slowly pour it in and mix while we're pouring it that. Slowly. Soap making can be a moving meditation if you make it, if you know you did, you set it right. For me, it's like my it's like my outlet, my creative outlet to like get like in tune with, my, with myself so I can like, I'm like quiet and by myself and just focused on doing what I'm doing so like my thoughts don't wonder so much so it's like, it's really, it's really, really, really good thing to get into. Okay, now I'm going to do my fresh ingredients. I'm going to pour in slowly as well. When you do it slow, you don't hear those. Okay, well, I guess it's the water. Now, this doesn't really take long to thicken up because it has um, some palm oil. It has like a high con concentration of palm oil, which is like one of those solid ingredients. And FYI, our palm oil is sustainably sourced. Um, so it actually helps the economy of where we source it from. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna get the stick blender now and do a couple pulses here. This thing already kind of has a different trace. I just want to do a little bit to make sure it's 
it's um, emulsified, that it bonds. Now, I'm going to use this part to just scrape around the sides. Make sure everything's in there. We're going to pour in our fragrance here. This is a blend of peppermint, eucalyptus, and spearmint essential oils. Soap is very minty. <laughs> and it leaves a tingly feeling. See the top of this. I wish I could so you could kind of like see the trace that you're looking for. Alright. Now I'm going to section these out. Some of the colors that we're going to do. We're going to four different colors. And then this one is for the white. I'm not going to do much. I just do these based on like how much of whatever color I want to use. I think this is going to be the that right blue there. I'm just going to scrape out this big container right here. Now to me, I can I can make this a little bit more trace a little thicker. I have like a really thin trace, so I'm gonna do it a little thicker. And this is a good place to do that. So you know, so it stays thin while I'm pouring one color, especially when you're working with multiple molds. I have three molds here. When you're the larger your batch is gonna be. Um, you know, you want it to be slow moving, like I keep saying. Um, so, one way to do that would be to um, do the blending, do more stick blending later on, like when you're adding in the colors. So, I'm going to spray some alcohol to heal. Where's my alcohol spray bottle? Where are you? Now we're going to do 
do the white layer right here. like blended very good because I don't want no um like pulse or anything so what I'm gonna do I'm doing gonna do a thin strip at the bottom first Like you're blending with the lighter color. Remember, the more you stick blend, the more you blend, the thicker your soap is getting. So, unlike like with melting pour, the more you blend it, the thinner it'll be because it's like moving around the heat more. So it keeps it thin. With this, it gets thicker. So I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit. And then doing additional stick blending at this time also helps to disperse your color evenly. I'm going to try to scrape it off as much as I can. If it gets into the other color, that's fine. I might actually make a, a batch that's like a little light blue that gets drizzled somewhere. This is really good consistency. Oh. And mix it around. Make sure everything's completely dispersed properly. So now it's time to do <laughs> Now I'm going to do a thin, a thin layer at the bottom. this one I wouldn't use the stick blender <laughs> right because it's going to be sitting while we pour so I wouldn't thick it up anymore I just use the stick blender with the white to make sure that titanium dioxide is completely dispersed mica, mica disperses a lot easier so one of these kind of like blending sticks with this works good with it Look at this beautiful rich color. Look at that. 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 Beautiful. Okay. That's that. You are done. I'm loving how you're looking. You're pretty. You're beautiful. Okay. And then this 
one. Hmm, should I do? I'm not even second guessing myself. Should I do? Hmm. I move this. So with the soaps, with the, oh, I'm sorry, not the soaps, with the, the, the colors, what I did to get those colors to get it to be so bold is I use, so this, this, this amount, um, this was three, no, six ounces of grapeseed oil to about two ounces, hold on, was it double? No, it was three ounces, sorry. Three ounces of grapeseed oil to six, six teaspoons of the mica and the titanium dioxide, depending on which one you're like blended and mixed in. Make sure this is completely around. Okay, which color are we gonna do next? We're gonna do this one? Let's move, let's move this one in there. Okay, can y'all see yourselves? Okay, just a drop swirl. You see when it's still like liquid, you see how we can like Move it around. Okay. From one corner to the next. And then I'm gonna add a little green in there. Rich sea blue. See how this is fluidy and moving. Techniques that I showed, you will be able to get your soaps in this fluidity so you can create those beautiful soaps using high quality nourishing ingredients. We have aloe vera, fresh aloe vera in these soaps, we have fresh lemon juice in these soaps, we have apple cider vinegar in these soaps, and they're beautiful. They're beautiful, it doesn't have to be plain. You can you know you can get creative with it. I remember when I first started making cold process soap making, it was so intimidating. Let me tell you, tell us, tell y'all a story. When I first made soap, the first type of soap I made was cold process soap. I made the big era of putting the water into the lye. What does that cause? It caught. I look at it like it caused an explosion. It almost blew up the house. <laughs> right? So that, that that experience scarred me so much. I didn't make soap for like Copra. I didn't try again for like another two years. I didn't make soap. I didn't make soap for another year after that. Then I went into making melted pour soap. And then another two years after that is like when I really got back into like, okay, let me try this again. So yes, cold processes soap, cold process, cold process soap, which is this type of soap, can 
be a little intimidating at first um because you do have to learn like a lot right there's a lot of research that goes into it to make sure your soaps whatever what ingredients that you're using you know is going to come out you know gonna, gonna give you this type of something like this well this was my aim I always want to make beautiful artist artistic soaps and it's just like me my personality how I express myself always have when I was younger I used to want to like be a fashion designer so that was like my creative outlet why because Project Runway was always on the TV and when you see something all the time you don't want to do it so hey young girls out there my name is Empress Tanika here at the Zoba Collection and I teach soap making for free right now and I also make soap to help women um, and you can do the same too. Mm -hmm. Tune in to me. I'll try to, I'm not going to try. I'll be going live like very consistently, especially while I'm making these soaps um, so y'all can see how it's done, how it's done to give you some inspiration, motivation. That's why I'm here. So I'm on this live right now. Okay. Oh, this one got thick. See the titanium dioxide? You gotta mix it up, work with it. Because it gets thick really fast. It's a thickener. People, you know, it's just food safe. You know, people have this in their food. I wouldn't put this in my food, but there's ingredients with, with, with this in this in the food. Just like the oils we used to make this soap is in food. Shoot, so is the um the sodium hydroxide. That's in soup that is in food. So our soap is food safe, like food. I don't know what's the term, the industry term that we use. Uh, we gonna go back to this color. So I'm gonna use these more fluidy colors to break up the white and give us some swirls because that white did begin to get thicker. I should have did a little bit more green. I feel like, like we're missing a lot of green pops in this, but it's okay. I'm using a drop, swirl, swerve hand technique. You get what I'm saying? When the soap is dropping into the soap, dropping into the different layers. Um, it's how I'm able to create some of these swirls. this peppermint and spearmint and eucalyptus is still popping even though it hasn't gone through the curing process oh my goodness this is so pretty it's so pretty it's so pretty i know this is gonna come out so gorgeous i know this is gonna come out so gorgeous and i hope y'all use the techniques that i share here um you can go back you'll be able to go back and watch this live i hope we're not like over an hour it might be soon where they came us off we should be fine i hope they notify us now i'm just going to continue to go back and forth between colors yeah. left hand give you some exercise oh okay now okay now 
now your your you know your patterns don't have to be perfect you know you're just gonna create random patterns because each bar is gonna be different right that's how that's how you get the swirling technique because it's cut it's being cut into bars and it's like different layers to it so yeah okay. Go back to this we forget about you now remember to keep rotating this part of it as if you're if you're using this you don't have to use like a titanium dioxide because you can make a soap without the white but i like to use white because it adds like differentiation with the coloring like it helps the other colors to like pop against it so like the colors don't like morph into one So I like to use this way. Even though it does this, it gets thick really fast. So it can be you know, a little hard to work with, but that's not hard. It's not hard. It could be a little challenging. We gotta watch how we use our words, right? Or I gotta watch how I use my words. That's why I tell myself. Changing up the way how I speak. Now this soap is gonna be ready to cut in about, I normally give it about like two days to sit. You don't want it to sit too long because um, when it sits too long, it'll be harder to cut. I use a wire soap cutter um, and it works best like with like medium soft to hard soap. Like when it's solid, but not too hard. Otherwise it, it has a challenging time cutting the soap. Concentrate. I'm like really focused. <laughs> really focused. Now you get excited if you're a little too excited. Because you get a little too excited and then like too much soap come out and you end up like messing up a little part of your design. So I'm taking my time here. Taking my time, taking my time, taking my time. This is going to be such a beautiful soap. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm going to show y'all um, what this is going to look like when it's all said and done. Actually, I'm not going to use no more after this. The rest is going to be for the top.
gonna scrape out all the tops and create my shape for the top. I'm just scraping out the bottom of our containers, kind of like when you scrape out cake. Table. I don't know if it's a table or like the house or what something. It's like all balance. Does this always happen when I'm making sofa? Like one side be like more elevated than the other. I'm just gonna scrape these out anyhow. show y'all how we make really cool and pretty top designs. Just gotta get these out, y'all. Sorry if I'm like blocking your view of these beautiful soaps. Ooh, my hands. This is a hand workout. This is a workout, y'all. Get all this out. And this is one of the reasons why our soaps are small batch and not like huge batches. Like I'm not sitting here making like 10 loaves of soap because they, this process demand tender love and care and attention. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's hot in here. It is hot. Let me stop complaining. It's not what y'all here for. Okay, okay, almost done. Almost there. Almost there. Almost finished putting everything on. And I'm so excited to see the cut of this.
Now, I'm going to get, where did you go, where are you? I'm going to use like the top of a dropper. Ooh, actually, I got this. Yeah, I'm going to just use this. I got these. A little bit more professional. So I'm just going to use some, you can use the top of a dropper. Only a bone drop, which is about this thick or this. Um, can y'all see to create these swirls in which I'm about to do? I'm gonna make sure I'm standing in a good position. Okay. And you don't want to swirl it too much because when you swirl it too much, the, the colors begin to morph. I just want to do. Very like one go through. One or two. I'm doing two because I have these clumpy, like kind of thick white area. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty! It's so pretty! It is so pretty. So this is where I put my signature in it. Well, their signature before that, like, the whole pouring is a signature, but then this is an additional signature layer. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. So when you're doing this swirl part, you want to be sure with your swirls, right? You want to be very sure with your swirls because you don't want to go back through too much and have them morph. Now I think this batch, I'm not going to sprinkle any, any, um, any gold on top. I'm going to leave the, this like, just like that. That is beautiful. Now I'm going to put some herbs on top. I'm going to put some corn flour because it's pretty and it matches with it. Hold on. So now I took off my big thick gloves because I'm done like with the scooping. You see how much in the jar I had to scoop out? If I had these little thin, thin things on, all here would be irritated. So, okay. These don't need like pounding down too much, just a little jiggle because they're not thick. Okay. Now, I'm gonna spray some alcohol on top. It's said that the spraying of the alcohol helps to reduce the likelihood of getting like soda ash, which is like this. It just look like ash, ashiness on top of your soap, but I'm gonna show y'all later on a really cool way to get rid of that using a steamer. Um, not later on now, but now I'm going to add on the flower tops. But can y'all see how beautiful these soaps is? Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It is amazingly beautiful. <clears throat> Alright. You could do some roses too. So we've done the center on the side. Which one do I like better on the side? It's best to put this on ASAP while this is still fluidy. Let me get my little thing. Hold on, y'all. Okay, back to what I was saying. It's best to do this while this is still um like liquid on top and it hasn't solidified too much next next live i'm gonna have the camera inside of the container so y'all could see like the consistency that the soap base gets um when you leave it sitting and basically this is what happened when the soap sits you know it starts to get it starts to get hard it starts it begins its curing process so you want to add on your florals immediately so they stick 
And this is another reason why I do small batch, such small batches is so, you know, we can have, we can get these design techniques done. It's really difficult to do this with like 10 loaves of soap here, right? Some, some of them is not gonna, they're not gonna attach because some is gonna be cured already, right? Loaves are gonna be cured already. So that's just a tip that I can share with some of my fellow soap makers. Um, really consider um, small batching, if especially if you want to do, you want to do something like more creative and artistic. Now you don't have to for this to be a good yoni soap. Like you can use the same ingredients: the aloe, the apple cider vinegar, the lemon juice. Right, same thing. And you could probably use like one color. Could use one color instead of like these four different color bases I used. Keep it simple. Keeping it simple allows you to make more. I'm just using this stick to like press them down, get it to stick on top. I will say this about adding like herbals and loose flowers on top of your soap that when you want to do like the steaming technique I'm going to show you all to get rid of the soda ash get over here that these will blow off they'll blow off I did find it a little bit more difficult to like steam the tops of the soap that had florals versus the ones that didn't it's a lot quicker on carefully. Oh my goodness, you could still smell the mintiness of this. I'm loving it. I am loving it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. Now we will be having some of these soaps available um, as soon as next week, Monday, perhaps. But make sure you're subscribed to our email list, our text list, so you can get the Black Friday exclusives. Um, this batch right here is not going to be available for another four weeks. This is going to be for our um, holiday time restock, so y'all be able to get these ones in particular um, like before the holidays, depend whatever holiday you celebrate, like before the post office starts to, you know, get delayed and close. Because, you know, they be closing. They be closing. All right. Okay, just going to use this and poke and push the herbs down a little. You want to anchor your herbs to your soap or else if you just sprinkle them on top, they're going to come right off when it's time to cut. So you want to anchor them. And just put 
push it down a little and you got to be very careful with this part because we don't want to ruin our silk top designs all right i'm gonna come get the camera real quick and do like a close-up so y'all can see this was our i don't even know the name of this yet i'm gonna need y'all to help me name this soap <laughs> but it's a mint scented yoni soap bar so it has peppermint eucalyptus spearmint um and it's made with aloe vera lemon juice and apple cider vinegar and it's gorgeous let me get you let y'all see a close-up I'm gonna close these gloves. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. How do you flip? There you go. Okay. Lights. Alright y'all, bye! Thanks for joining us!